Hello everyone, welcome to my place. I found another interesting talk, but to me, talks like this should never have been in any kingdom hall or any church. That's my opinion. Because when you bring two animals, a bull and a bulldog together to make example to have a tight grip whatever you're holding on to as example to make your point then I don't think this talk that using a bull and a bulldog to um, make a point there's other things out there they could have used without using cruelty of animals and when you, you get into this video you'll see they use the cruelty of animals to make a point and to me that was wrong and so you can leave your own comment what you think of this talk a part of this talk so let's get into it you know me I'm gonna rip it apart if uh, someone said to you you have a face like a bulldog you probably wouldn't like it but if someone said you have a grip like a bulldog now that would be different in fact, the bulldog is known for his stubborn grip. Once he bites in, he doesn't let go. And you probably heard the expression, he hung on like a bulldog. Now, that bulldog doesn't have that name for no good reason. Back in the 12th century in England, they had a sport called bull... 12th century. How much research did you do, Elder? For your information, 12th century ago, to know every detail, every part of the story that you're giving to the Jehovah's Witnesses and the children, how each animal was trying to kill the other for men's sport. Unbelievable. Let's continue. Bull baiting, and they would take dogs and put them in a ring with a bull. And the dogs would try to get a hold of that bull and try to pin that bull. But they had a number of problems. First they put a number of dogs in there, then they came down with one dog facing one bull. But they had problems. Uh, for example, the dog, dog's legs would be too long that the bull could get underneath them and throw them over. And then another problem was the fact that at first they trained the dog to get a hold of the ear of the bull, and that didn't work out too good. So later they trained the dog to get a hold of the nose of the bull. And as you know, that's a... So if possible, the bull was hurting the dogs really bad till they find the right type of dog, breed the right type of dog, so the dog will have less injury compared to the ones that got messed up by the bull for entertainment. Unbelievable. Very sensitive spot on the bull. In fact, even to this day, if you go on the farm, you'll notice that the farmer puts a ring through the nose of the bull. And then if that bull doesn't want to go where the farmer wants him to, the farmer gives that ring a little twist. And usually the bull does his beckoning. So that worked out better. But another problem was that the dog would get a good bite on the bull, but because the dog's nose would be pressed up against the bull, why he couldn't breathe, so he'd have to let go. So through a process of breeding, they developed the English Bulldog. Now, if you Someone I know has a dog like this. 
the way you describe it, it looks just like the little runt that I I thought think he's kind of cute, but still, for them to breed bulldogs and to make him of his ancestors back to go back to 12th century to fight a bull. Watchtower, do you have anything better else to do? What can't you mention about one of your servants, Jehovah Witnesses, who had a hand tight grip on his stepdaughter that was supposed to serve 10 years prison and he only served one year. I mean, wouldn't that be a good example to use to uh, show how his grip was probably tighter than that bulldog to make your point? No, you're not going to do that, would you? Because that would be telling everybody that uh, there's a pedophile in their congregation. I mean, I've seen the news on this. I put a video up on it. How Watchtower will not let the people in the Kingdom Hall to know they have a a tight grip on these men but they're not letting the kingdom hall know that there is a pedophile in among them no so besides using an example of a tight grip like someone using a baseball bat or even a, a club for golf, wouldn't those been a good examples to use for tight grip? You didn't have to use uh, cruelty of two animals was trying to kill each other to make him bleed to make a point. And the point they were trying to make it was from from Paul's words and. Actually, they're going to admit that this is a, a spiritual thing, not an actual grip. So, let's get into that part. You never seen an English bulldog. I know you'll agree with me. He's really cut off with a jaw. First of all, he's got little short stubby legs. His tummy almost touches the ground. And so the bull couldn't get underneath him. He's got a great clamp-like mouth. My, he gets the whole nose right in his mouth at one shot. But do you notice where the bulldog's nose is? The bulldog's nose is pushed way back in. And so as a result, that bulldog could get a hold of the nose of that bull, and he could hold on, he could continue to breathe and stay right there, and he could pin the bull. Now, the grip that that bulldog has could well illustrate the grip that you and I should have on God's word. Turn your Bible to Ephesians chapter. Wrong. God's word. Uh uh. Watchtower's literature and their blaspheme Bible. Oh, yeah. They have a real, real tight grip. In both hands, they hold their Bible. Both hands, they're holding their precious literature. But on God's word, it just falls right through their hands. And they can't pick it up because their grip is terrible or something like that. But it's isolated. Isolated. Well, what I'm trying to say. It's so, their grip is so perfect that they cannot slip or drop their literatures that's been twisted all these years
Job which says you gripping on the wrong thing and letting go the real Bible to keep your false Bible which is nothing but a book it don't even deserve to be called a Bible just like the Book of Mormons don't even deserve to be called part of the Bible or their Bible. Let's continue. Notice the counsel that the Apostle Paul gives to us. Philippians chapter 2, and I'm going to start reading at verse 16, so follow along there if you will. Philippians 2, starting at verse 14. Keep doing all things, free from murmurings and arguments, that you may come to be blameless and innocent children of God, without a blemish, in among a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you are shining as illuminators in the world. Notice verse 16, Now keeping a tight grip on the word of life, that I may have cause for exaltation in Christ today, that I did not run in vain or work hard in vain. So Paul's counsel here is to keep a tight grip on the word of life. Now what did he mean? Well, did he mean that we had to go around all day long holding the Bible in our hand or under our arm like people do Saturdays and Sundays when they go to church and then they violate all the principles that are in God's Word? Violate principle in God's Word? Oh my gosh, Mr. Elder. I've seen so much adultery, fornication. But... I didn't know if there was any pedophiles in our congregation, but there was many in Australia court over a thousand cases and many cases in California all through Uni United States. And you're not breaking any rules, any laws, what a joke. No, Paul, it means that. In fact, Paul wasn't talking about a physical grip. What Paul was talking about was a mental grip. And what he was saying is that we should keep a tight mental grip on the word of life. And he had to use a bull and a bulldog, for example, for mental grip. Mental grip is not going to be torturing another animal or killing another animal. Come on, Jehovah's Witnesses. Can't you see something wrong with your religion like we have? And he brings out that the best grip is Keep coming to the meetings, um, going out fill service, studying with your family for Sunday meetings and stuff like that. Keep the whole grip, your grip into Watchtower's teaching. Don't worry about the Bible's teaching, but the solid grip of Watchtower's lies that's the reason why we got out because we loosened the grip we found out that there's nothing to hold on to anymore there's no salvation in this organization even their paradise it's not even correct they're letting people die for not get, let them have blood and find out in different countries one of them is allowed to have blood and there's no consequences so those people are allowed to live if they take blood fusion and here in cases that uh, you're not allowed to uh, take blood 
fractions? Because like one elder said, no. Because that's still blood. And he's correct. Blood fractions is still blood. But it is a law or your conscience you're allowed to have blood fractions. So why is elders pushing not to get blood fractions the people are not allowed to take blood because if you do the math and use this common sense and talk to doctors about blood fractions and you'll find out the blood fractions is nothing but a scam by the watchtower make you think that they have special blood that's broken down from its components for uh, for Jehovah Witnesses. No. Just like my friend, she had um, problems that um, part of her blood fractions, that the part that uh, helps you to stop your bleeding, that part they add back into her so as she get cut it will slow down and stop bleeding now that's using one of the components of the blood but she didn't get no 30 percent or 80 percent of that it was exactly what it was People, you're putting your grip on this false religion so much that you blinded yourselves in thinking that without these people, you will not gain salvation. The Bible says, Christ said, come to me, my yoke is light. Watchtower's yoke forcing you to go 80 hours a month or 50 hours a month 40 hours a month or whatever you, you're allowed for yourself to to put in you lose losing money losing gas losing time for a false religion you need to let go of your grip just like that bulldog let go that bull is bigger than you are it's not worth injuring yourself for a false religion or a big badass bull people What is your comment? You think Jehovah's Witnesses should give up on this false religion? Or they should continue till when Christ comes, He will judge them. And every single one is going to lose their lives, just like any other false religion. Because they failed two things. One, examine your religion and your teaching. We done that. Two, is get out of her. We done that. And Christ even said, you have to choose your family or me. bunch of us we had to choose Christ and give up our families otherwise some of us could have stayed in the meetings to be with our families and friends and knowing we would die in this false religion knowing we would die a bunch of us got out. My situation was different. 
my parents, sisters, all of them left this organization, but none of them knew or even know what I know. But hopefully it's some information that was given to my parents from Mike and Kim might have woke my parents up to this false religion, but I haven't heard nothing from my parents. But at least they got the information they could examine what was given to them. That's what we do is major research. I did plan my research and made many videos of my research. And others has done the same thing. So we let our grip go on a false religion, a dangerous cult, to find the real truth is the reason to we got out of this false religion. So I have another part two of this video and uh, the, the part two will be uh, don't lose your head. Serious, don't lose your head in Jehovah Witnesses religion. That's what part of this talk is about. So anyway, y'all take it easy and talk to y'all soon. Bye bye.